and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from the beautiful garden city of Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a fantastic weekend so far. I hope you're all healthy and happy. Uh, students, we're looking at uh, IELTS speaking part three, talking about business and career. If you were in the class that just concluded uh, 30, 40 minutes ago, you know that part two was about a business idea that you have had. So here, of course, part three speaking for the IELTS will continue to relate and connect to part two. In part two, we talked about the business idea of opening a farmer's market. Then we also had Sanantha give us a nice presentation about opening a cafe and Domenico about starting up a dive shop. Nadi came up with the idea of the farmer's market. Students, uh, again, we will continue to use our websites in this class, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. These are the websites that power these live classes. If you like watching, and participating regularly it is a really good idea to join the premium IELTS package it's a one-time payment for lifetime access it doesn't cost a lot we're an IDP affiliate we're a British Council partner IELTS test registration center I'm a certified British Council agent I hold a degree in psychology and I have helped thousands of students to achieve their IELTS scores so you're in good hands uh, and we will use this website shortly uh, for general IELTS students, it's the green background. Click this big red button here that's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Welcome back, Alexi Chen, our moderators. Nice to have you on board with us. Nice to see all of our uh, viewers, members here with us today. It's fantastic. Thank you for being here. Uh, with us and uh, sharing in this lesson. This lesson is interactive, so you will hear other students and potentially yourself if you volunteer in a little bit. Um, students, use the code READ9 on the websites for a 10% discount when you're checking out. Follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore A help GILTS help for um, schedules. Uh, we're putting up lots and lots of reels, practice for the speaking section these days. So check out those reels, uh, all good for helping you master English and communication, of course, IELTS. Um, for uh, questions, send an email, adrian, aehelp.com, it's my name, at aehelp.com, or admin at aehelp.com. Hi, Sneha. By the way, lots of new members have joined recently, and it looks like most of them are doing great participating in the live classes. That's That's awesome. Happy to have you all with us, fantastic. All right, everybody, um, Amazon does have our exam books if you want the carbon, the paper uh, version of those books. Um, AE helps academic outs, G helps general outs, look for those books. Send us an email for the audio when you have those books. Uh, March 25th to April 1st. Right now, speaking part three, then we've got a little bit of a break. Um, for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Back on Thursday, live classes run usually Thursday to Saturday. And uh, on the days when you don't have live classes, check for new videos and use the course, use the interactive course. That's a great way to prepare, okay? Uh, here is a video with um, a Vietnamese, Band 9, uh, IELTS speaking candidate. Really informative, check it out. Okay, I've put it into the chat as well. So uh, take a look at that when you have a minute. Um, students, IELTS speaking part three, let's get right into it. So what the examiners are looking for here for those nice high band scores is good detailed language. Sounds like a conversation. Okay. Uh, always think about giving answers, explanations, and examples. OK. 
okay? That's the goal here. So here's the first uh, question introducing the topic. Let's talk more about business. What is the advantage of owning a business instead of working for an employer? So give me a nice uh, full sentence um, answer for this one. Uh, put it into the chat and then very quickly today we will be switching to volunteers because I want you to do lots of practice and we have about one hour for this class today. So I want to give as many of you as possible a chance to practice so I can give you a band score estimate and I can teach you strategies, tips, vocabulary, grammar to help you achieve better scores, okay? So, Alaunis, you joined, that's nice, awesome. Uh, send us an email so you, we can uh, get you those links for those exclusive videos, okay? All right. Uh, Donna Bell says, owning a business means you are your own boss. Okay, this is Donabelle's answer. Um, Donabelle, this would be about a band five until here. Um, the examiner here is thinking, so what? Okay, uh, so what does that mean? Okay, also another important tip with this is do not use you, okay, when you're answering these questions. it makes uh, the conversation uh, low quality. Because it's inaccurate. Like for example, uh, Donabelle, if you're talking about me, like you're saying when you, um, yeah, I own my own business. So thanks for that information. It's awkward, right? So it's like, it's weird to, even though I know you're not talking about the examiner, it does sound that way. So it's awkward and you avoid better words. So it means that the entrepreneur or the owner um, uh, is uh, independent, right? So you avoid better words by using you or your. It's kind of like things, right? You avoid better words with those words, okay? So don't use you, okay? Uh, Dunabell, um, owning a business, let's change this into a band nine, okay? And then you'll see what I mean, all right? Let's make this a little bit bigger for those of you on mobile phones. Uh, owning a business means uh, a person is their own boss, so they have more control regarding time and finances. My father owns a real estate company and although he works hard, he can take a vacation whenever he wants. Now it's a band nine. Okay, so answer, explanation, example. Donabel, do you see how I did that? Do you see how I turned that concept into um, a more accurate, detailed, clear answer? So owning a business means a person is their own boss, so they have more control regarding time and finances. My father owns a real estate company, and although he works hard, he can take a vacation whenever he wants. That's your band nine. Okay, Donabelle says, yes, I did. All right, Donabelle, uh, thank you. And everybody, make sure to repeat, copy and repeat, okay? So, copy and repeat, speak and repeat, okay? Very important, we're here to practice. All right, uh, Snehal, our newest uh, member, is Snehal our newest member? We've had a few join today, which is kind of exciting. No, sorry, Allowness is our newest member. Sneehal is definitely fresh, but not the newest. Uh, well, anyway, Sneehal says this. So Sneehal says, 
In my opinion, owning a business really provides more freedom in terms of methods and also gives you choice for flexible working hours like I am a biology tutor and if I have my own educational classes, where's the rest of it, Snehal? Got kind of nipped by the word limit, right? Okay, Snehal, definitely don't jump around with the subject, right? So you can't say people and then you and then me and then it's kind of like, who are we talking about? You, me, people, everybody. Um, so control it, control it. In my opinion, owning a business really provides more freedom in terms of time and money. Methods doesn't really make too much sense and also gives uh, the individual choice uh, for flexible working hours like I am a biology tutor and if I have my own um, classes okay that's getting a little bit weird there let's just make that simpler more accurate and if I have uh, commitments I can schedule a students to fit uh, my uh, university uh, responsibilities right so like going to classes doing projects so uh, Snehal, in my opinion, owning a business really provides more freedom in terms of time and money and also gives the individual uh, choice for flexible working hours. Like I'm a biology tutor and if, I, and if I have commitments, I can schedule students to fit my uh, university responsibilities or just fit my responsibilities. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, what are negatives? So again, the uh, speaking is conversational. So the kinds of questions, especially when you're doing a good job, um, the kinds of questions the examiner asks you are connected, okay? So if the examiner in speaking part three is asking you these kinds of connected questions, that means you're doing a good job. That means that you're answering accurately with good detail and they're having a good conversation with you. That's a good sign. Okay, so uh, what are the negatives? Kevin, nice to have you in the class. Kevin says, this, the disadvantages of being the owner of a brand are the intense and persistent pressure of trying to keep the company profitable and the employees happy uh, the reason why these tasks are so stressful is that they are very difficult and would have dire consequences if failed the ceo of my company actually told me that only one out of five businesses survive after the first year and in restaurants, it's one out of 13. Okay, uh, Kevin, not bad. We want to be concise, okay? So you want to find the balance, students. Uh, give a full answer, give an explanation, include your example, and be concise. That means say it in a short and connected way, and that's where the magic happens, and that's where you really have to practice a lot. So Kevin, let's make this more concise, okay? Because as is, you might get interrupted and it's a bit awkward, okay? So the disadvantage of uh, owning a brand, right? So simplify whenever you can. And a good way to do this is to transcribe your speech. So when you talk, Kevin, record it, then get Google to change speech to text and then see if you can shorten it with writing. It's good writing practice too. And then say it again okay so the disadvantages of owning a brand sure um, are uh, is because we have repetition here is intense pressure we don't need the persistent intense is enough is intense pressure uh, instead of trying intense pressure to keep the company profitable and employees and customers right happy uh, yeah that's good ok 
okay? The reason why these tasks are so stressful, um, okay, avoid the why, students. So whenever you hear yourself using a question word like why, when, and so on, try to think about, can I say this in a concise way where I don't use the question word, okay? So you can say, uh, the reason is that it is so stressful, okay? Even simpler, this is so stressful and very difficult because failure has dire consequences. Many people uh, can be out of a job, right? So if you mention dire consequences, that's very impactful. It's like dire consequences. Dire consequences means like terrible results, right? Like dun, dun, dun. Um, so if you say that to the examiner or to a person, right? Um, then the immediate question is like, what? What's that dire consequence? Well, first of all, not just you, but everybody you're employing suddenly has no money, no work, right? So it puts uh, not just one, but multiple people into difficult situations, right? So many people can be out of a job. The CEO of my company, uh, you don't need the actually, just told me that only one of five businesses survive the first year, okay? So we definitely got, notice how it actually became shorter and we said more, Kevin. So if you watched, we actually ended up with less words, but we ended up with an extra piece of information explaining those dire consequences, right? So that would be a band seven to a band nine adjustment. Okay, make sense? The way you can do that is exactly how we're doing this. You say it, you write it, you rewrite it, make it concise, and then you say it again. Everybody got that? It's a really, really, really good practice for part three. So here is uh, just a tip to great practice for part three. Answer the question. So this is step one, right? Answer the question. Step two, transcribe it. Um, that means turn speech into text. Use Google. Okay, Google can do that for you. Okay, uh, you can even use Google Translate, just use the English function, right? And then three, uh, edit the text to be concise and accurate. Step four, say it again and record it. Step five, listen to it. Okay, practicing concise language and mastering this skill will be a great benefit in your life, not just on the IELTS exam, but in your school and in your work and in your personal life as well, okay? Communicating information clearly, accurately, quickly with enough detail is the magic to a prosperous, happy, healthy life. I know this, okay, 100%. So don't just do it for the IELTS, but do it for yourself, do it for the people that you love. When you can communicate to your brothers, sisters, parents, friends, girlfriend, wife, husband, teachers, colleagues, in concise, clear format, you will achieve your desired results, you will help them achieve their desired results, and you'll live a happy, healthy life. Got it? It's a very important, very important concept, okay? Um, and this is a great way to do it, practicing in this way, okay? It's kind of like you're programming your brain to think in this way. Does that make sense? Yes? Daisy Lee says, yes, yes. Electro Niladri says, okay, got it, okay? Absolutely one of the best um, projects that you can do for yourself, okay? All right.
<clears throat> okay, um, so without further ado, let's get into some practice, okay? So just like before, we're going to talk to uh, our viewers, our volunteers, those brave, beautiful souls who say, hey, yes, I'm going to talk with Adrian and figure out what's going on here, practice these questions, okay? All right. Alexi, very fast, very good, thank you. So Alexi says, to volunteer, this is what you do. Um, go to the website i will paste the website in there as well that's step one and then follow uh, alexi's instructions follow these instructions here okay uh, you need a my student account so obviously youtube does not let us speak to each other doesn't have that ability but we do okay so um, you can join our premium IELTS uh, by clicking the big red button or you can join free by clicking the green button. Either one is okay. The big red button above my head, premium version, great idea, doesn't cost a lot. We're an IDP affiliate, British Council partner, IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent and I hold a degree in psychology. So I have a pretty good idea, as you might guess, of how to communicate, how to get those higher band scores, and I'm here to help you do just that. Uh, get into your My Student account, okay? Uh, check it out, if you have the premium version, make sure to use all of these tabs, okay? Go through all of them. Lesson videos, exams, interactive course, all of those. Check out the additional services. Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, you can use this function at any time in the free or full version. The student partner speaking. Boom, there it is, right above my head. Click on that. Okay, then you get into the chat interface. And in the chat interface, you've got <clears throat> this awesome uh, roster of beautiful people. Uh, Donabel, I see you at the top there. Try volunteering. You can try that first question with me for real with your voice. Okay, um, and then send me, you'll see me in here, students as master, uh, check your system, okay, try not to test it with me for the first time, because it just slows down the uh, class if we're not able to connect, so test your system with others, meaning send a message to somebody, say, hey, let's just say hi to each other, make sure my microphone, speaker, the website, everything works for me and you, and then if it works, then you can say, okay, we can practice more later today. I wanna to try a sentence or volunteer with Adrian, which is fine, okay? So, uh, and send me a, and then send me a, a, a request to volunteer. So say, I wanna try or volunteer, um, like uh, Dewey is doing. You can see Dewey here. Uh, Dewey, Thu, I see you as well. Um, yes, you can, are you ready? We'll give Dewey a chance to showcase his English. Hi, Adrian. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Dewey? Yeah, I'm doing great as well. It's a beautiful day in Paris, and uh, I have a, I'm going to have a little night chat with you today. So Awesome. <laughs> sounds like a storybook when you say that. You're like, it's a beautiful day in Paris. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it sounds like the start to a movie. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in Paris. Um, all right, uh, Dewey. Um, I saw that you were in the previous class, if I remember correctly, as well. Yes, exactly. And you didn't have a chance to speak there, but I am curious, um, what was your business idea? Well, before that, can I ask you a question? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Go ahead. Is there such a thing as a overused topic in the part two, two card question? Because uh, before we, st before when I first saw the question, I come up with the idea of Pitching the English pitching English online, but then you said that it's kind of obvious as an idea. So I kind of changed and shifted my idea into um, into a company that rent out bikes to tourists and residents in Paris. But, okay. Uh, um, so to answer your question simply, um, yes and no. So when you say my idea is to basically open an English education school or an English language school, um, I think that's okay. That's a good idea. It's original. I don't think too many people would go with that idea. Um, but definitely for certain cue cards, there are topics that seem to be overused. Uh, for example, for this one, like talk about a business idea, I think maybe opening a restaurant or opening a cafe would be kind of a typical topic that the examiner might hear a little bit, let's say, 
too frequently, where it doesn't sound too original, or or they have a hard time not comparing between candidates or among candidates. I don't think an English school is that common. I think that would be okay. Uh, the one topic, though, Dewey, that I absolutely recommend avoiding altogether, no matter what comes up, are mobile phones, okay? I understand that people love their phones and they can't live without them, um, but for the IELTS, that's probably the one topic that comes up way too often for um, for uh, the examiners is, uh, you know, talk about a business. I want to open a mobile phone shop. <laughs> talk about an object. I'm going to talk about my mobile phone. Talk about a gift. It's my mobile phone. Talk about a useful. It's my mo So everything's a mobile phone. Um, so avoid that one because the examiners hear it too often. Okay? Okay. All right. So to answer your question, my idea for part two is to is to open a company that rent out bikes to residents and tourists in Paris. That's a very clever idea. And um, here's another interesting point with that, Dewey. So I would imagine that there are at least a few businesses that do that in Paris. So I, I guess that if I go to Paris today, I have a choice of renting bikes from a few different establishments. Would you agree? Yeah, that's, there, there are a lot of businesses that run that kind of business in in Paris, and the reason I chose this topic is because uh, I once have a, I once have a chance to talk with you about an idea to improve the environment, mm -hmm. and I also talked about the idea of renting out bikes. So I just kind of like, uh, or reuse it, like recycle this this idea. Yeah, it made a lot of topic. sense, and I remember that you had done that in the past where you talked about um, bike rentals. And um, I think it's smart. So I think it's smart to be able to adapt um, an original idea like renting bikes uh, to different kinds of cards. So I absolutely agree with it. It is important to make sure that you uh, do adapt. So you're reflecting the actual question of this is a business idea and you're in it to make profits and you're in it to um, have a green business that's uh, helping the environment. So to focus on that business concept and not just the concept of bikes in the environment, right? So that's very important. Okay, uh, Dewey, uh, let me ask you a couple of questions and then uh, we'll go from there. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, uh, so let's talk more about business. Um, what is the advantage of owning a business instead of working for an employer? Running a business offers its owners the luxury of having a more flexible lifestyle and a greater financial outcome for the same effort if they work for somebody else. For example, as I said in part two, uh, being the CEO, CEO of my own company will eventually help me to retire at the age of 40 or 50 without worrying much about the financial aspect. Are there any negatives? Well, when talking about the disadvantages of being uh, a CEO, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, the paperwork and the constant pressure of keeping the company afloat and eventually thriving. Uh, while CEOs does earn the lion's share of the, of the company's profits, that doesn't come without a cost of being the most affected by any mistakes occurring in the company. I think that's why it's very difficult to run a business successfully. Awesome. That was really good, Dewey. That would um, earn you a band nine. Um, it's very methodical, so I can tell you're thinking, you're choosing your words wisely, you have good fluency, uh, you have really nice connection among your ideas. It's very logical. You're using some excellent vocabulary as well. Um, it can always be improved. Band nine doesn't mean perfect. Yeah. But certainly, this is the type of um, uh, communication that the examiners are looking for for that expert level of uh, of English. Okay, so they're looking for all of those elements. Um, let me uh, show everybody what you're doing really well because I can tell that you're you know you're really applying a lot of the strategies that uh, are presented in these classes. So uh, take a look at this beautiful use of a correlative conjunction that Dewey applied right away. So Dewey started the sentence with weather and here this is a challenging way to answer this question because you are creating a situation where you have to say weather or. So once you start with weather 
There's no, <laughs> there's no way to avoid that or <laughs> option. Yeah. And it's dangerous because sometimes students get stuck or can't people get stuck and they don't know what to say with the or. They're like, or, I don't know. Um, so it's a bit dangerous. It's a bit risky. But if you can do it, it's going to get you some marks for sure. So you said whether a business offers its owners a luxurious uh, lifestyle um, or time to spend with their family, for instance. Um, certainly um, having one's own business has uh, several benefits. So it's it's a tricky way to express um, this answer, but a very high level English, certainly. Okay. Uh, the takeaway here is practice using correlative conjunctions like whether or, either or. They're very, very effective uh, for connecting ideas and um, for good answers. Okay. Uh, so that was good. Um, I love the paraphrasing. So you used, for example, CEO of my own company. CEO, of course, means chief executive officer. And most corporations, the owner is the chief executive officer. So that makes sense. Okay. So that was really good. That was very nice. Uh, good, uh, good use of, of the correlative conjunction and vocabulary. Um, then in the next question, what are the negatives? Um, Dewey, you said the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Um, always avoid the word thing, everybody. So you can always come up with a better term. Um, Dewey, what could you replace the word thing with here? The first thing that comes to mind, even though that's a common expression, the first thing that comes to mind, you can actually say that better. Um, what could you say instead of thing? The first... Disadvantage. Yeah, absolutely, right? So even in these expressions that use the word thing, you can still make them better. So the first disadvantage that comes to mind, it just sounds better, right? The first disadvantage that comes to mind is the paperwork. Um, and um, then the other part. So paperwork, very nice use of vocabulary there. Okay. And then this nice idiom here, lion's share. Can you tell everybody, Dewey, what the expression lion's share means? Like the biggest part of something. Yeah. The majority, right? The greater majority uh, or proportion of a whole. Yeah. And um, English idioms are very visual, uh, as are idioms in other languages. Um, so uh, when you remember this expression, everybody, just think about the lion when um, you are in Africa and um, there's a fresh kill in the savanna. Uh, there's a gazelle or an antelope. Uh, guess who gets the most meat? The lion. Lion chases away the hyenas, the vultures, all the other smaller animals and eats the most of that animal. That's why they call it the lion's share because the lion eats the most of the of the prey, right? Yeah. Make sense, Stewie? Yeah, yeah, but um, <laughs> I agree with you. It's very visual and it's helped a lot to kind of see what it means. It have a lot to remember. Exactly. And, it, you know, it's great to use these. Um, and it's not a tricky idiom in the sense that it's short, right? Lion's share. It's it's two words, basically. Um, and these kinds of idioms are very effective to get those higher band scores. I think some students feel they need to use these very complicated, long idioms like don't throw bricks when you live in a glass house. But you don't need to, you know, use these to to get those higher band scores. You can use these shorter ones that are two, three words. OK. Yeah. All right, Dewey. That was really good. Um, thank you for that. And uh, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And hey, maybe one day we'll see you running that uh, bicycle rental shop somewhere near the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Who knows, right? Yeah, give me a call and you, if you go to Paris and you need a bike. Okay? <laughs> I will definitely keep that in mind, Dewey. I'll give, you, I'll give it to you for free. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. All right, Dewey. We'll chat again soon. Yeah, have a nice day. Bye you bye. too. Bye. All right, that's great. Um, okay, students, I'm just going to refresh the page here. I think we have a lot of people pinging the server. So I'm going to refresh the page to get a fresh new connection with everybody. Please do the same. So just refresh the page and then send me um, a notification again uh, that you wish to speak with me. And I will look for some volunteers. So just give it a good old fashioned refresh uh, so we get some new pings and then um, will will connect uh thu i know thu has been very patient this class and last so let's see if thu is available are you ready all right so if you're in paris and you see a bike shop or a bike rental place in the next few years it might just be dewey's all right here we go hey 
Hello. Hi, Thu. Hi, Thu. How are you? Hello. I'm doing great. Thu, can you mute YouTube just to make sure we're not getting uh, the... Uh, hello. Yep. Can, I can, can you... I can hear you. Absolutely. We're all good. Uh, all I right. Can, I can hear you. Good. Thu, what's your business idea? Um, my business idea in I think because I I don't have a tendency to become a entrepreneur in the future. You don't my, have a desire to be an entrepreneur. Well, that's okay. Yeah. You can still have business ideas even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur. Somebody else can do it. You come up with a good idea, get someone yes, else to do it and pay you. <laughs> right? Of course, because my mother is a very successful entrepreneur, despite the fact that she, she only opened a very small girl this shop. Mm -hmm. See, so it runs in the family, as they say, it runs in the family. Yes, of course. All right, Thu, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Are you ready? Uh, yes, I am very pleased to uh, to answer your questions. Okay, let's talk more about business. What kinds of businesses are popular these days and why? Well, there are a mid varieties of uh, uh, business in my countries yeah, and but I think the most uh, ubiquitous uh, one is trade business this is a type of uh, selling and buying and in my country there are a, a lot of uh, shopping mall in my uh, shopping mall where people close it many uh, where people selling many uh, many clothes and uh, which is very flexible. How have business practices changed compared to a generation before? Well, yes, of course. In uh, in the past, uh, we usually see a small corporation. But nowadays there are lots of a uh, very big uh, corporation which is opening in my operating in my country. Okay, we'll stop there. <laughs> good, good. No, no, I don't. <laughs> okay, I'll give you the goods and the bads here. No. All right. <laughs> So that would be about a uh, band five-ish, okay? Um, you're almost fluent, but it's definitely a bit of effort for you to maintain fluency. And um, there is a little bit of repetition of words. Uh, however, I can tell that you know a lot of words in English. so. Uh, you know the word corporations, nowadays, operating, um, varieties, um, so you've got a decent vocabulary. I think your vocabulary is closer to like a band seven. You have to practice using it, right? So that's what you're doing right now, which is great. Also, pay attention to your plurals. So you often use the plural S, like there are big varieties. Um, country in my countries uh, you put an s on the end of that as well uh, be careful not to overuse plurals and use them in incorrect ways okay so just really pay attention okay all right um, uh, selling many clothes right it's 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 a bit awkward again um, which is fine that's how we learn it's good now the question here is what kinds of businesses are popular these days and why? Whenever a question talks about these days in the future, one idea that you should always think about is technology. Okay, Technology is such a big part of society and life today that there are some easy answers when you think of technology, right? So um, you're right that uh, shopping malls are quite popular these days. I agree. When you think about technology, what other businesses through are really popular? I think intellect. 
Think about the, the, com the, com the computer, the internet, internet businesses, right? Yep. Are very popular mm -hmm. as well because technology, right? So uh, selling apps, uh, selling uh, products online through Amazon, um, businesses that deal with visual media, right? Lots of people selling uh, videos, movies, uh, and making money from that. So um, definitely technology is a really good choice. Now be specific too, Thu. Uh, people who are watching right now, they probably don't know, or many of them don't know what country you're in. So what country are you in? In, um, living in Vietnam. In Vietnam. So you want to say that, right? So, well, there are many different businesses in Vietnam. I think the most popular are boutiques in shopping malls, as well as online businesses like Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, these make millions of dollars uh, each year. Uh, last week, I bought a shirt from the mall and I ordered uh, a new uh, laptop online. Right, so mm -hmm. there's my answer, explanation, example. Uh, try it just once, Thu. Okay, what kinds of businesses are popular these days, and why? And uh, well, there are a big variety of business in my countries, but I think the most ubiquitous one is a boutiques and a shopping mall, malls, and. Um, I don't know. Online shopping. Uh, last year, I bought a very uh, fashionable t shirt uh, uh, online. Okay, good. Much better. Don't forget specifics. So instead of countries, Vietnam, okay? Or in my city, okay? No. All right. Okay, Thu, that was very good. Keep practicing. So use that vocabulary, okay? Yes, I will. Okay, bye, um, Thu. Bye. <laughs> All right. I think Thu maybe had a question there, but I'm uh, not sure what that was. All right. Okay, uh, let's try uh, somebody else. So oh, there's Donna Bell. Let's, uh, let's check in with Donna Bell. We, I don't know. I don't think we've ever heard from Donna Bell before. Yes, you can. Are you ready? So let's see if Donna Bell is still with us here. Hopefully, can put a voice to the content. Donna Bell, if you're there, sure, awesome, okay. Hi, Donna Bell. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Donna Bell, this is the first time you're volunteering, right? Yes, it is indeed. Good for you. First of all, hats off. I'm glad that you took the leap or the step to volunteer. Uh, Donna Bell, can you tell me what country you're in? I am actually from Philippines, but I am currently in Saudi Arabia. Philippines, but currently in Saudi Arabia, KSA, an incredible country. Uh, and why are you taking the IELTS? Um, for immigration purposes. Okay, well, I'm going to help you with that, Donabel. Um, let's get into it. And I'm happy that you're uh, a premium user as well. Are you using the website every day? Um, not really, since um, I have... Um, I'm working like uh, 48 hours a week. So during my off days, I try to use the, I, I try to watch the videos on the website. I'm currently, okay. I'm actually new. Okay. I just okay. recently joined. Yeah, good. Okay. Mm, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, the videos are good. Also, definitely look at the interactive course. The interactive course is really useful. And here's a good tip. It will work on your phone. It's uh, responsive. So it will reshape and change to fit your phone too. So you can use it on the go. Okay, uh, let's do this. Are you ready for a few questions? Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So let's talk about uh, business. What is the advantage of owning a business instead of working for an employer? I think in my opinion, owning a business means you have the uh, freedom to be your own boss. I, I would, uh, what I mean by that is that um, you have the, um, you have uh, more flexibi flexibility with your time and then uh, you plan according to what you believe is um, more profitable for your recipients and um, uh, that's it you have more flexibility more time with your family and uh, you how have business practices changed compared to a generation before I think the business practices have changed compared to before um, with regards to technology. Uh, currently, the it's easy to easier to reach your uh, recipients through the internet. Um, you have a bigger platform compared to how it used to before, and. Um, uh, you you have a variety also of um you have you have you can have new ideas with regards to the development of what you are currently um selling or um is this good or bad i think this is a good idea because uh since uh the technology can reach wide uh, uh can reach from one end to the other end um, that means you you uh, you are able to earn better or earn more than what it could have been like before. Just like the Amaz how the Amazon sells their products from uh, one country to another, to, it, all because of the technology. Okay, let's stop there. All right. Um... So here, uh, with these answers, uh, your score is about a 5.5. You're staying relatively fluent. Um, your answers kind of make sense, uh, but there's definitely um, a bit of an issue with coherence. And um, the first question I asked you, because I remember in the chat, you, you typed yeah. your answer in, right? <laughs> And unfortunately, you made the same mistake. Um, what was the same mistake that I really tried to emphasize yeah. the first? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. you got that. Can you can you just tell everybody that really loudly what that mistake is? It is you. <laughs> yeah, the you. And notice how that's really causing an issue. Um, I, I'm sure the other people caught that as well, where you get stuck in this you, 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 you. And at, by the end of your answer, all I'm hearing is me, okay? It's like you, me, you, me. Um, and I've lost all of the other information. So the, the content really deteriorates. It falls apart, okay? So what I want you to focus on, Donabel, um, as you're going forward is don't use the word you. Never, ever. As soon as you use it, just stop yourself, go back and say, no, what I mean to say is people, business owners, CEOs. Like notice how Dewey really avoided that word for every mm -hmm. part of his answer yeah, and it made yeah. a lot of sense, right? Um, so you have to stay away from it. Unfortunately, that word gets us into trouble. Anybody, native speaker, non-native speaker, it doesn't matter. As soon as we start using you, it, our communication starts to fall apart. Okay, mm -hmm. so we want to avoid that. However, you had some really nice points as well. Okay, and um, I want to emphasize that. Uh, when I asked you, how have business practices changed? You recognize that this is present perfect and you made sure that you used it in your answer. You think you said, I think business practices have changed compared to before. So you showed me that I can use present perfect and then immediately you said technology. So you realized, oh, okay, what he said to Thu, right? Think about technology. You said, so technology. Currently, it is easier to reach 
and then you said your and i was like oh no not the your um so currently it's easier to reach oftentimes you don't even need the word your so you can say currently it's easier to reach the recipients the recipients right you don't even need the your the recipients mm -hmm. through the internet uh not you have a bigger platform but retailers right uh, uh, retailers are retailers people who sell yeah retailers have a bigger platform compared to how it used to be before and then you said you have uh, yeah. you can have new ideas and that was just really confusing I'm not sure where we were going with that but um, that's what happens we fall into that trap so answer this question for me one more time but no you okay so here we go how have business practices changed compared to a generation before I think the business practices have changed compared to before um, with regards to techno technology. Um, currently, it's easier to reach the recipients through the internet and retailers would have a bigger platform compared to how it uh, is used to before since they could only cater people from uh, within their vicinity and Nowadays, through technology, we can reach um, from uh, vari I mean, from one nation to another nation. Perfect. Okay, great. And see, now I felt that you were really working hard, and I could even I could feel yeah. your brain working to focus on your ideas and avoid the U. The U is kind of like a shortcut. It's our brain goes to that as an easy option, but it's unfortunately a mm -hmm. very bad option, right? So when you're practicing yeah. for your IELTS. Um, avoid the word you in the whole speaking interview not just part three but everywhere in part uh, one two oh, and three course, okay and I guarantee you're going to go from like a band five five immediately to a band six point five seven okay immediately mm -hmm. you'll make a one band improvement there does that make sense mm -hmm. good good that was really good Donabelle that was really good um, okay Thank you so much for joining. Thank, Thank you, so you for, you yeah, and come back. Make sure to volunteer in the future again, okay? Of course. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Donabelle. Bye. All right. Let's give Donabelle a thumbs up. That was your first time. It took a lot of courage to do that. I'm sure many of you still remember the first time you kind of volunteered and you're like, oh, I'm sweating bullets. Um, so that was really good. Okay. Really nice. All right. Um, let's do one more here. Um, I can see that uh, Fuang, uh, I don't think, has had a chance here. So we'll give Fuang a chance. Are you ready, Fuang? If you're still there. Ram, good to see you as a premium student. Make sure to volunteer as well. Aziz, I can see you in the chat. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Fuang, if you're still there, I know it's getting really late for you in Vietnam, but if you're still there, okay. Hi, sir. Hi, Fuang. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you, sir? Pretty good. You sound like you still have a good amount of energy considering it's probably like, what, 11, 12 o'clock for you now? Yes, I'm a little bit sleepy right now, but um, I try to learn with you, sir. Good. And you know what? Um, on that note, Fuang, it's hard but it's good practice um, to speak English when you're a bit tired and you're exhausted because we don't always have the luxury of speaking another language when we're full of energy right so we have to practice when it's a bit more challenging um, when we're a bit fatigued so good for you all right are you ready for a few questions Fong? I'm ready sir all right here we go let's discuss work and careers many people have three or more careers in their lifetimes why is this common Mm, is it popular that people have more than three jobs in a lifetime nowadays? I think the reason is that they not only want to get experience for some achievement, but they also want to sell for the future to make their freedom for the five projects into reality. What is needed for a person to have a successful career? Mm, that's an interesting question. Um, well, an individual needs to identify his goal before starting his work. That leads to a successful career. I mean, the goal in life are a thesis in writing. A person must find the right position to pursue his career. Although this sometimes it effort and time consuming, it's truly really important process. 
All right. I'm going to stop there, Fuang. First of all, Fuang, that's awesome. You're really working hard and, and that's paying off. I can tell. Okay, I can tell that you're studying hard and not only are you studying hard, but you're studying smart. Um, firstly, your, your pronunciation is really starting to improve. So I'm starting to hear clarity in your words and that's great. Keep doing that, okay? So whatever you're doing is working. That's really, really good. Really nice answers and good job using the vocabulary from the last class and this class. That's exactly what a learner should do is take new vocabulary and apply it effectively right away. Not just from what I say, but from the peers as well. So, um, and I, I caught it, uh, Fuang, so I caught everything you said, okay? Uh, you were so fast I couldn't keep up with you in my typing, but it was really good. So I said, many people have three or more careers. And you started by saying, hmm. So you kind of slowed it down with that, hmm. And that was really good. It was natural. You said, hmm, it's popular that people have more than three jobs. Very nice paraphrasing, okay? Uh, by the way, that was an easy 7.5 there, okay? Easy 7.5, even going on towards an eight now, okay? So very nice, Fong. In their lifetimes. And then you used a correlative conjunction. I caught that right away. You said, not only... Uh, because they want to have more experiences and then you said something like but they also want to make more money and you said because they want to achieve or reach their freedom 45 plans so you use that ex expression that idiom from the last class that you learned that was really clever and you used it very fast um, so that was very smart Fong, really good um, do you have any questions about your answers or about the speaking um uh, yes, sir. Um, um, <clears throat> my pronunciation is not clear. Uh, I think this is the reason why I cannot get the band eight of a nine. Uh, so can you give me some solution <clears throat> to take this problem? Yeah, so pronunciation, especially you're young, so for you it's even easier. I mean, pronunciation does get more difficult when we get up into 40, 50, 60 range. But when we're, you know, in our um, late uh, teens, uh, early 20s, you can still master pronunciation, absolutely. Uh, what you want to do is uh, focus on practicing phonetics and articulation, okay? There is um, a lot of training that you can find. There are lots of experts that deal directly with this on how to articulate sounds. Articulation means the way that you move your tongue, your teeth, your lips, the air that's coming out of your lungs to create those sounds. So practice articulation. Okay, and if there is someone in your area or someone you can find online who can train you for articulation, that's really good. It's kind of like um, uh, voice lessons. Do you know what voice lessons are, Fuang? Mm, no, sir. No, but you can probably guess. So some people, their dream is to become like a professional singer, right? So, you know, like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And then they have a voice trainer that trains them just like... Um, a basketball coach or a gymnastics coach that's training you to move correctly. You have voice trainers that train people for sounds and for uh, using their breath. You can do the same with pronunciation, training for articulation, okay? So take a little bit of time, Fuang, and research the best way for you to learn that articulation. And then, you know, you might have to spend a few minutes each day going th, th, th. Cha, cha, cha. But as weird as that is, it will pay off, okay? Okay, sir, I got it. All right. Okay, Fuang, keep it up, and your English is amazing. It will also come with practice, so reading aloud and speaking, okay? Thank you, sir, for giving, uh, giving me feedback. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you. See you next week. See bye, you. bye, sir. Bye, Fuang. That was really nice. Did you hear how Fuang said goodbye there? Very well composed and it's that kind of language that does help with pronunciation all right um students uh with that in mind um continue using the chat talk to each other as well use the website i know today's lesson is a little bit shorter but i have to be somewhere for 10 o'clock so i have to kind of end our class here however don't threat I will be back. I'm back on Thursday with speaking part one and I will definitely be looking for uh, 
as many people as possible, many who I've missed today, to practice their speaking, to give feedback, to join the premium package on the website and uh, practice your English with your peers as well, okay? It's very convenient, it's a great way to find speaking partners and it's absolutely free. You can use it with the free version by clicking the green button. So above my head there, it's aehelp.com, gltshelp.com. Uh, students, the general outs looks like this. Uh, thank you so much to all of the viewers, our moderators, Chen, Alexi, great job today. Thank you members and a special thank you to all of the volunteers in the class uh, right now and in the previous class as well. Review your work, watch these videos again, especially those parts where you may have volunteered. Uh, check out aehelp.com, check out gltshelp.com. We will be releasing a new speaking video in the next day, so look for that new speaking video with an awesome candidate from Germany that will be on the, on the channel shortly. And keep your chin up, keep pushing forward. You're all beautiful people and you're all amazing. So never forget that, never let anybody else get you down. Believe in yourself. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Victoria for now and I will be back in a few days. Bye everybody.